All right, good afternoon. The Secretary General, as you know, is in Moscow. Whereas we speak, he is meeting with President Vladimir Putin. Uh, we'll be sharing more details of that meeting uh, later on. Earlier today, he had an audience with His Holiness Kirill, Patriarch of Moscow and All Russians, with whom he discussed social inequality and the, and the need to help the poorest, among other topics discussed. He also attended the World Cup match between Portugal and Morocco, and I think you know uh, the result of that. And tomorrow, he will meet with Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov in the morning, and also meet the heads of the UN agencies present in Russia to commemorate 70 years of UN presence in the country. Uh, and in the afternoon tomorrow, he will be giving a remarks at the Valdai Club in Moscow. Turning to Yemen, over the last week, our humanitarian partners have been continuing to deliver assistance to people fleeing the fighting in Hodeidah. They are rapidly responding to the needs of newly displaced people in Hodeidah and surrounding areas. Uh, it is imperative that humanitarian personnel are provided rapid, safe, and unfettered access to respond to the needs as they evolve as a result of the fighting and for people to get access to the assistance that they so need. If fighting reaches more urban areas, civilians will be put at greater risk, including from the spread of diseases, including cholera. And we remind the parties of their obligations under international humanitarian law to facilitate rapid access to protect civilians and civilian infrastructure. And our special envoy, Martin Griffiths, has ended his um, stay in Jeddah, and his negotiations and contacts with the parties are ongoing. And uh, turning to Syria, our humanitarian colleagues are concerned about reports of an escalation of violence in Dara governorate in southern Syria, which is endangering civilians and causing hundreds of families to become displaced. Hostilities have reportedly resulted in some restrictions on movement, as well as reports of further displacement in northern Dara governorate in rural uh, Kunitra. And the UN called again <clears throat> on all the parties in this conflict to take all necessary measures to safeguard civilian lives and to allow freedom of movement and to protect civilian infrastructure as required by the international, international humanitarian and human rights law. And today is uh, World Refugee Day. As you know, on this occasion, the Secretary General in a message said that we must all think about what more we can do to help them. The answer begins with unity and solidarity. The Secretary General says he was deeply concerned to see more, uh, more and more situations where refugees are not receiving the protection they need and to which they are also entitled. The Secretary General recalls that this year the Global Compact on Refugees will be presented at the UN General Assembly. It offers a way forward and recognizes the contributions that refugees make to societies that are hosting them. The story of refugees is one of resilience, perseverance, and courage. Ours must be of solidarity, compassion, and action, he says. And our colleagues at UNHCR tell us that today, mayors from more than 50 cities around the world, including Amsterdam, Barcelona, Los Angeles, Manchester, Mexico City, New York, Sao Paulo, and Sydney, are calling jointly for more local authorities and municipalities to join them in welcoming and including refugees in their communities. The Cities with Refugees Initiative highlights the increasingly important role cities have taken on in accommodating refugees around the world. More information as well as message from the High Commission for Refugees is available online. And also linked to today, the Food and Agriculture Organization, UNHCR, uh, launched a new handbook to help restore forest in displacement impacted areas where heavy reliance on wood fuels puts forests and woodlands in jeopardy. In Uganda's uh, Bidibidi settlement, for example, one of the world's largest refugee hosting areas, annual wood fuel consumption mounted to an estimated 300,000 tons in 2017. If left unmanaged, wood fuel supplies in the area will only last up to three more years at this rate of consumption and would come at a high cost, the full depletion of the forest. More information on the interweb. Questions? Yes, sir. Uh, Adam Klassel from Courthouse News. Uh, as you know, yesterday the United States withdrew from the UN Human Rights Council and Nikki Haley called the Human Rights Council a protector of human rights abuses and a cesspool for pol of political bias, which in response, uh, the Secretary General through you said that the UN would have preferred uh, the United States stayed. I'm wondering if you have anything 
stronger in defense of the Human Rights Council uh, from attacks by a country uh, engaged in what the chief of that council called unconscionable rights abuses. I think what is important to note is that the Human Rights Council and the other parts of the UN's human rights architecture, uh, including special rapporteurs, the universal periodic review, uh, play a critical role in protecting and promoting human rights across the world. And the Secretary, Secretary General's wish is that all member states engage actively in, uh, in this human rights architecture. Now, the, the actions of the Human Rights Council are up to member states. It is a legislative body uh, of the United Nations, and it is up to member states uh, to, conduct, uh, to conduct that business. Uh, kind of follow-up to that. Sure. I'm sorry, just quick follow-up. Uh, many observers are noting that this action took place a day after the human rights chief uh, called the U.S. immigration policy and the detention and separation of thousands of children from their parents as unconscionable and government-sanctioned abuse. Are you aware whether the administration has made any outreach to the Secretary General complaining uh, about that statement? No, I'm not aware of any complaint uh, of the statement of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. Uh, Michelle and Carol. On the opposite side of that, has the Secretary General reached out to Nikki Haley or anyone else in the administration to discuss the policy? Uh, n no, Ambassador Haley uh, spoke to the Secretary General yesterday afternoon uh, to give him a heads up uh, that the announcement would be coming, and I think the Secretary General uh, made privately the points uh, that I made publicly. And did they also discuss, though, the US border policy? Uh, I'm not aware of anything beyond what I've just said. Um, Carol. Yeah, so Stefan, how concerned is the Secretary General about the U.S. retreat from the United Nations? This is the latest of a string of budget cuts, UNESCO, the Paris Climate Agreement, the Iran nuclear deal. I mean, are you looking at a wrecking ball uh, coming at the U.N.? Uh, those are your words, uh, clearly not, not, not mine. Uh, I, will give you, I will give you mine. Um, the United Nation, the the United States, uh, plays a critical role uh, in the United Nations. The Secretary General would want to see uh, a United States that is involved and engaged uh, throughout the UN system. <laughs> Mr. Klein, it's on the same subject. Uh, the Secretary General, on repeated occasions, has talked about the need for reform at the UN. So I'm wondering. Um, in light of the uh, criticism of the Human Rights Council uh, by Nikki Haley and Secretary of State Pompeo, and the Secretary General's own acknowledgement in the past about anti-Israel bias, for example, does the uh, Secretary General at least have any ideas, subject to the final decision of the member states, of course, but ideas or recommendations for reforming Look, I the mean, the, 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 the Secretary General, as you said, has already spoken on, on that topic and, and especially on the, the, the focus on, on, on Israel. The Human Rights Council is the product already of a, a very serious reform that took place uh, a few years ago. Uh, the criticism that we're hearing is in the substance of the discussions and the resolutions voted, and that is an issue uh, for member states. Uh, the human rights architecture as a whole in the UN is is a very important one, and it, it is a the human rights is a pillar of the work of the United Nations, and we would want to see uh, member states engaged uh, fully uh, and fairly in uh, in that issue. Well, um, in, in addition to the substance of the resolutions, the criticisms have been directed at the fact that there are no serious um, criteria for membership related to the human rights records of the countries involved. We can cite a number of, of the members that, that, with human rights records. That is an issue uh, well, for member states. You know, one of the very important Well, the question parts, is whether the well, Secretary, well, well, Secretary when, General has any views and recommendations to address some that, of the procedural that, that, issues. That is an issue for member states. One of the very important parts of that UN human rights architecture I speak about is the Universal Periodic Review, which brings under scrutiny uh, human rights records of all member states. Stefano. Yes, on um, today, Refugees Day. So um, the question is, uh, is uh, 
the, it's the UN and the Secretary General in, uh, in particular in monitoring with attention how um, migrants that are stopped in the Mediterranean and also situation happening here in the border with the United States, how uh, the recognition, if you want, when the, a migrant is, uh, is applying for, as a refugee status or political status, if how the steps <coughs> Well, that, that's, uh, that, it's a question of concern for us uh, all over the world. It is one in which UNHCR uh, is in the lead and they're actively obviously following uh, those issues. It is up to uh, all member states who have signed on to the uh, Refugee Convention to apply that convention fairly and in full recognition of the rights of people asking for asylum. I, I just my, and the question was finishing like this. I asked this before. A, re, uh, a migrant, somebody that starts his journey as a migrant, but then during the trip, uh, received abuse, he's under circumstances that put in danger his life. Does the UN consider it, this person a refugee? Each case has to be uh, examined. Yes, sir. Of the U.S. from Human Rights mm -hmm. Council, will the Secretary General uh, express or say more, as a, in addition to the two sentences you, had, you sent out yesterday? Well, you know, we, uh, I'm, you, I'm sure you'll be able to ask him uh, when you see him at the press conference. But I've, I think I've expressed his position, Mr. Lee. Sure, I have a couple of uh, different. Sorry, uh, in next uh, week we've announced it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 okay, go ahead. Sure, a couple of uh, human rights questions. One is, uh, in Mali, it's been uh, reported and acknowledged by the defense minister that there are mass graves of civilians killed by the Malian military. So I wanted to know, given that the UN peacekeeping mission there often patrols together and works with the Malian military, number one, is the UN aware, or, I mean, I'm assuming if yes, they were no, aware. Yes, we're, we're aware uh, of the situation and the, the UN mission there set up a human rights investigation team which has been looking into these events uh, since June 16th, and it will be dispatched in the field uh, soon if it has not already done so. And the U mission takes note of the communique issued uh, by the Malian Ministry of Defense, referring to the alleged involvements of military personnel in those deaths and the launch of a judicial investigation, and the mission stands ready uh, to, to assist. Does this change in any way the cooperation of MINUSMA with Units or individuals. No, in the I mean, obviously, the military. An, inve an investigation is is ongoing. The other one Masood, is that I'll come back to Masood. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Pant. No. Well, I just want to find out on this another treaty that uh, Trump administration has withdrawn from is the Iran deal. Uh, in in United Nations opinion, is Iran abiding by the still abiding by what the uh, what was negotiated? Between uh, all parties. I think the IEA has spoken on that, and the Secretary General is reporting under the, the accord. Edi. Thank you, Steph. Um, there's been an announcement today that Eritrea's president is sending a delegation to Ethiopia for peace talks. Um, this would be the first delegation since the border war in 1998. Does the Secretary General have any comment on this announcement? Yes, we, I mean, we've seen, the, we've seen the press report, we've seen the news. Uh, it's obviously a welcome uh, development. Uh, I think we saw uh, earlier in the, in the month uh, first opening uh, by the Ethiopian government to, the, to Eritrea on this issue. Uh, we obviously stand ready to play a role uh, in anything that would come, uh, come forward in assisting, uh, in assisting the parties. Uh, as you know, the UN has a long history uh, through a peacekeeping mission and the, the, the border commission in, um, in the conflict between Ethiopia and Eritrea. But obviously we'll see what happens, uh, but we, are, we clearly welcome uh, this development. Adam and then Carol. Uh, yesterday as well, the Secretary General uh, said that Gaza was on the brink of war. Um, any elaboration on the Secretary General's statements about that, number one, and number two, uh, also the timing of uh, the deterioration of the conditions in Gaza and U.S. withdrawal yesterday. Any connection you're aware of? 
No, I mean, in, in, so in your, second, of, your second, your second part is really a question for, uh, for, for the U.S. administration on timing and motivation and, and, and right. so on. Uh, you know, we are, I think, uh, any observer, and as uh, Mr. Mladenov said yesterday, I think we're, we're in a period of high risk in terms of, uh, of Gaza. A number of, uh, we are pushing for a number of issues, including greater humanitarian aid, uh, political, uh, the, the, the return of the full control of, the, of Gaza under the political, uh, of the authority of the Palestinian, uh, the Palestinian Authority, uh, working with uh, various high-level groups in terms of increased uh, humanitarian aid, and of course, uh, dialogue between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Carol, then Masood. Stefan, on Yemen. So mm -hmm. where is Martin Griffiths? And is My understanding, he, he left Jeddah. He's most likely in Amman, but we'll double check. Okay. And uh, can I <coughs> ask, you mentioned, you know, the, the call for rapid unfettered access mm -hmm. for aid. Um, again, is the fighting or the airstrikes uh, threatening the, the, the humanitarian yeah, operations, I mean, access to warehouses? Has the yes, road I mean, from it, Sana it, the con the to Hodeira been closed? Uh, the continuing fighting uh, makes it more difficult uh, to deliver humanitarian aid. It also increases the need for humanitarian aid because you have people fleeing, uh, fleeing their homes. Uh, I think there were some uh, 5,000 families that, we, that have moved over the, last, uh, over the last week. That complicates the situation. As far as I know, the, the port of Hodeida is still operational. As I mentioned, WFP had been offloading uh, ships, taking advantage of the fact that it remains, uh, it remains operational. Any fighting uh, will make it makes our work, humanitarian work, more difficult. Um, and I think our, our great concern is for is if and when the fighting spreads to more urban areas with the risks that imposes. Masoud, then Matthew. Yes, uh, Stefan. About this, maybe you have already answered this question about the uh, Yemeni children that they need essential drugs which they're not getting, especially life saving drugs, which they're not getting. This is the latest report. Uh, do you have any, anything on that? Uh, not all? specifically, but just to say the humanitarian situation in Yemen remains horrendous uh, for civilians, including children. But Matthew, do you, do you have I don't have anything specific on that. Matthew. Sure. Jones. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, the, the, the Security Council's meeting about, obviously, uh, Sudan and the mm -hmm. ICC. Mm -hmm. So I wanted, in listening to, to Fatou Ben Souda express frustration at states mm -hmm failure to act on the uh, indictment against Bashir. I just wanted to ask you, again, it wasn't clear to me what the answer finally was in terms of Marta Ruedas, who was at that time the resident coordinator in Sudan, taking this uh, Two Niles Award from President Bashir. How is this consistent with the expressed policy of min absolutely minimal contacts? Was it somehow required? What, how, did, how did the Secretariat decide that this was a a think, good interaction with I mean, the EIT. I, I, I didn't say it was a good interaction. I think I answered on May 4th, and that answer has not changed. Yeah. Could, uh, Mr. Uh, go ahead. Could I get a little bit more of a readout on Special Envoy Griffiths's trips to uh, see the Houthis and to see the Saudis in terms of has he got any progress on a Hodeida deal and the UN taking on the port, What's, uh, were those meetings positive? You know, and uh, secondly, yeah. on the wider peace deal, were those meetings positive? We're in the middle of an extremely critical uh, period. Um, Mr. Griffiths is having contacts, as I said, in, in, in Sana'a with, with the Houthis and others, in, in Jeddah with the coalition, with the Yemeni government. Uh, I think from our point of view, we're going to let him do these discussions as... Uh, discreetly as possible as anything is ever discreet. Uh, and I think when he's ready to emerge with some sense of where we're going, uh, he is. But I don't want to preempt anything he may want to announce. Yes, madam. Um, my question is still related to the Human Rights Council. It is reported that uh, Russia is applying for the membership of the Human Rights Council. Is that true? Have you received Russia's I, I'm not aware of it, and I think that would be a question to be asked of the, my Human Rights Council colleagues in, in Geneva. I can put you in touch with them. Masood. Yes, sir, just to follow up on this Rohingya uh, Muslim crisis, has the repatriation process been discussed? Is it in process or no? The, no. The I mean, I, it, when we have something to announce on the repatriation, we will, uh, we will do so. Our position remains the same, that people... 
uh, will need to choose for themselves when, uh, if and when they want to return uh, to an, in a way that is safe, dignified, and of course, and most importantly, voluntary. Mr. Lee. Sure. Uh, on uh, sexual harassment in the UN system, uh, I'm sure you've seen there's a, something, a group called the UN Feminist Network mm -hmm. of Staff. They've raised some concerns that the Secretary General's CEB task force mm -hmm. is not sufficiently considering victims, and they've specifically asked him to hold a town hall meeting where people can share their experience. And I know that in Vienna this came up. It was a little unclear. It was in a town hall meeting where he was asked to permit it. What's his response to the, to the UN Feminist okay, Network? I, think the, uh, I know our colleagues in the Department of Management have been in touch with them. Uh, it's very important for us to hear all voices, and uh, we will continue to listen. And I wanted to ask you, about, it, it may seem strange, but at the, at the uh, Portugal-Morocco game, uh, it was also reported that Sepp Blatter, former at FIFA, uh, somewhat disgraced uh, head of FIFA, was pre present at the game as a, as a, as a guest of uh, President Putin. And I wanted to know, do you know whether Antonio Guterres met Sepp Blatter? Where did he, you know? No, I, I don't know, and I don't, uh, I don't speak to FIFA. FIFA. Thank you.